Hi everyone, it's Kate from The Forward Line. I'm back this week to talk all things sewing bee. It was semi-finals week. I can't believe we've only got one more episode to go. Um, I'm not gonna spoil it, but the twist at the end of this episode, I thought was so lovely, it actually made me well up. And I think because of it, there's going to be a really fantastic final. Um, but let's get started this week. I'm not gonna lie, anyone who's watched all of these, I'm sure last night was thinking, oh my God, how, how, well actually probably weren't thinking about how I was going to find them. But yes, we had a bit of a tricky night hunting out the made to measure so let's get started. The first challenge was a te the technical challenge and this was a, um, they made a robe that was inspired by a kimono. Um, Esme actually created the pattern herself with her friend um, and we've got two really great options. I thought it was so difficult. I can't believe like I've actually never made anything with that kind of much fabric and the they had to bag it all out, it's fully lined, it just seemed like an absolute nightmare to be honest. So the two patterns I've got, the first one I've got is a Vogue 1610. Um, I, we thought this was really close, you can see it's got the kind of um, wide sleeve, it's got the band around the neckline that stops kind of about two thirds of the way down. Um, it's got an option for a kind of wide-ish belt and if you wanted to make it a bit more like the one that was in the show last night I think if you extended it so that you could get that big giant bow. Um, this yeah felt pretty close, it's got pockets as well which is fantastic. Um, the other pattern that we thought would work really fantastically is the um, Liesl & Co Winwood Road robe and sleep shorts. So this comes with the robe and also little shorts um, it's pretty similar, um, it's got the big band, um, it, the difference is it's got patch pockets which obviously you could leave off and the sleeve is um, longer and very slightly narrower. This probably is the slightly more wearable version if you wanted to have this um, to kind of as a dressing gown um, to wear every day and the shorts actually become a bit really cute as well. So um, we thought those would be two really fantastic options. The middle challenge was the um, upcycling one and I loved this week's one, I thought it was really great. So they had to use sashiko technique on denim. So this is a mending, Japanese mending technique where you kind of embellish, um, embellish the hole to kind of make it and use different fabrics and stitches to kind of create another fabric. So it's kind of mending beautifully, which I've said extremely badly. <laughs> Um, I, yeah, they, they were really, really great and what they did I thought was really clever. So by this point, um, Annie had had a really good, both of hers were really good. Um, Deborah had had like a really, one had gone really well and one had gone badly. Um, Brogan and Manny were sort of in the bottom. So at this point it felt like there was sort of everything to play for. And then we went into the made to measure, which was making a garment um, that was inspired by origami. So the, they wanted to have fabric that was sort of folded and manipulated so that it felt like that. So with everything to play for, they all went in. Um, I'm going to start with the pattern that we as the closest. I'm not going to lie, this was really tricky for us because because they were using the concept of origami, they used patterns and then obviously um, did some of their own pattern cutting for it. So um, I'm good. We're, we're going to do the best we can. <laughs> so the first one, I'm going to start with the one that we know I know was right. So Deborah, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I know what this pattern is. And um, so it's a top pattern, but she extended it and made it into a dress. So it's the trend pattern tuck sleeve top. Um, it's such a gorgeous pattern. If I show you the line drawing, you can see, so it's got these big statement um, sleeves that sort of fold into the seam. Um, they're gorgeous. And as soon as actually they were talking about the um, origami 
theme I thought actually of this pattern because I think it's really beautiful and if I show it to you you can see actually in terms of extending that into a dress it's really simple you just continue um, on the kind of panel after the waistline so in terms of her changing it to make it into a dress I think that was quite easy but we I know that, that one is right I also saw a little kind of snapshot of the pattern envelope in the corner so I know that is correct so next up I'm going to go with Annie um hers was really incredible so she'd used um so her inspiration was an origami rabbit and she had it kind of folded on the table in paper and she'd use that to make the dress the dress looked completely different from the base that she used but I did manage to see in the background the pattern envelope so I know that this is the base that she used to create it she used the McCall's 6838 um, it's a little strapless dress it um and it's got quite a lot of variations as well actually so you can make it however you like it and it's got a sort of waterfall front but she just used the base and I think that she used it because it has um seams kind of panelled seams which she was putting boning in um I thought that worked really well and then she added the panels on top of of this sort of base so yeah hers was really beautiful but this was the base that she used um brogan's was i thought really clever and i felt like it was a bit unfair they her use of neoprene i thought was a really clever use of fabric but their their kind of beef with what she made was that she hadn't folded stuff but i i felt it really felt like origami anyway it was beautiful so it was quite a simple sort of shift shape the core feature of it there were two kind of core features it had this kind of wavy seam along the middle of it um she then added these kind of statement cuffs where she'd got circles that she'd sewed together to create this quite sculptural sort of cuff at the bottom of the dress um the pattern that we found i mean i don't think this is right i'm I think she drafted it herself but the forget me not patterns april dress is quite similar it's got the um it's got the kind of wavy seam down the middle it's a shift shape and then obviously you could add loads of other things but we thought that would if you really liked because i thought that was the kind of core detail of it this kind of wavy seam with a ruffle in it and if you wanted to recreate that this pattern would be a really good base so i hope that's a good starting point for you Manny was really difficult because essentially hers was all self-drafted um she did loads and loads of embellishment and she added lots of things but essentially it was quite a simple shift shape that was slightly a-line um and kind of high necked as well so the pattern that we thought would be a good starting point for this is the so different artista dress um this is actually a really gorgeous pattern if you haven't come across it before um, it's got quite a lot going on it's got panels down the front um, it's got that sort of high neck and there is a few iterations that you can make it in but we thought that would be a good sort of starting point for that pattern if you wanted to recreate it um, yeah I, I mean we did okay it wasn't wonderful this time I have to say we it also gets harder when there's less people hilariously um, they kind of yeah anyway I hope that was good we will be back next week with the final hunts um i hope you found that useful there's also a blog post as well so go and have a look so we've got everything there as well have a lovely week bye